I'm here. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. All right. Um, how's everyone doing so far? Well, welcome to our uh, guest sponsor interview. Um, I am Mike Pedersen, your con chair. Uh, you all know who I've got here. Uh, we've got Missy Lackey and. and you uh, and if you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and together we form a Voltron of fantasy. No. <laughs> what's, what, what, what's your couple name? Huh? What's your couple name? Uh, we don't have yeah, one. You haven't worked it out? Uh, All right, I, uh, that's your homework. Before the end uh, of the week, I don't know. Okay. It's last week. <laughs> what's that? There? Last week. Okay. Last All right. Um, that's the whole name for the virus. Yeah. Last week virus. Last year, come home. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, you got some planning to do. <laughs> how, many, how many people were here for the signing last night? 1.15 in the morning. How oh. sorry. Yeah. Go must go on, man. You guys, you guys are rocking it. Thank hey. you very much. All right. We're here for the band, so we're going to give it all we got. All right, so we're going to talk for a little bit, and uh, after a while, I'll open up to, uh, to the audience for some questions. See, the really funny part about this is he thinks he's going to moderate us. I know. <laughs> I don't know. You're so cute at that age. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are insured, right? Uh, yes, 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 we're good. We're covered there. Um, do you guys count as an active gal, though? Oh, and how? Oh, okay. <laughs> that's right. We need a little bit she of She rocks my world. <laughs> oh. Well, on that note, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Talk about uh, how you guys uh, first met. Okay, we actually met on a television interview. Uh, we'd been brought in as guests of honor for a small convention, and they took us right to uh, a set at the local news. And it was like, "Hi, I'm Larry. Hi, I'm Misty." And three, two, and here we are with. And we got to know each other actually on air. And by the end of that weekend, we plotted our first book together. Wow. <laughs> I was Meridian, Mississippi, and it was in the days before cable was everywhere. Yeah, so we were news. So <laughs> every little tiny town had its own TV station. Yep. It was powered by steam, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, 1880s? Yeah, exactly. There was a guy over there pedaling. I had no idea why. You look great for your age. <laughs> oh, seriously. That's what a tortoise will do for you. Bathing in virgin's blood. It's so true. Now that we find that at conventions. <laughs> Uh, so you guys are uh, clearly big geeks as well. We are. Yeah. Yes. Well, um, Probably so. What What was your first uh, interaction with fans? Being fans? No. Yeah. That was it. I just came from Bertha, you know. I just fortunate. Miss you. The formal fandom. Probably first through the SCA. Um, Bless your heart. I discovered the I discovered the SCA before I discovered. Oh no, that's not entirely true. See, it's clutter of memory. <laughs> well, I, when I when, when I was when I was in high school, I, I joined the Tolkien Society of America. So that's probably that that's probably more fandom the first can, interaction. We can, can you guys hear hear everyone in the back? There's no microphone here. There is no microphone. We had one here last year. I don't know why we don't. Yeah. Um, I'm, I I'm very disappointed in you. This so. is as loud as I get, folks. Yeah. yeah. What, what can I do to find one? Uh, uh, there's no way we can get one in here and set up the time. That's fine. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll project. project. Try and be loud. We shall project. Back row. But thank, thank you for pointing that out. Anybody us. that can't hear, just move up for, forward, sit mm -hmm. on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> seats up there. There's seats up there. There's seats up there. Seat up there. Yeah, we'll pat you on the head. Yeah, if anybody needs a seat up here, I'm willing to move. <laughs> Warm before there us. Are <laughs> there are two seats up there. Cannot sit on the floor. There are two seats up here. We have a bouncy drill. I'm not speaking bouncy of drool. myself, thank you. <laughs> there are some people who cannot do that. There are seats up here! That's how she gets my attention. <laughs> There's another one over here. Would you like to move up to one of the, the front seats? Next I'm to not talking people. about I myself. Know, whoever you're talking about, Chris. Don't worry, Chris. And there's a couple of them. <laughs> we love you. There's a second chair that you can take away from the table. Yeah, in fact, fill in for us. <laughs> okay. All right, we're good now. All right, good. Where were we? 
Um, you were Horrible telling family. us about your divorce. Yeah. Aww. Okay. Well, that was about uh, ten years ago now. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> it was amicable, though. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Because well, I've heard, you know, that you had an issue with uh -huh. ponies. Well, we yeah. try not to go into that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just a fandom for you, is it? Yeah. Well. Yeah. You know, once you go pony, you don't go back. <laughs> well, you, you know how the whole brony community is. Friendship it's, is magic. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a plan? I had no plan. I was, good. I, my, my only plan was to wing it. Ah. <laughs> I, I, I know you well enough at this point to know that uh, any plan was going to get completely derailed. You know as well and you came anyway. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> uh, and yet, I, and I still invited you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, proud. You live and you learn. Obviously not proud. <laughs> well, obviously you live, but you don't learn. Yeah, mm -hmm. not, not, not yet. No. Mm -hmm. well, I've, con I've chaired 12 cons in a row, so yeah. Yeah. clearly haven't learned. Wow, it's chronic at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe that has something to do with it. It's Captain Chronic. Captain Chronic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the, the, the start date for the very first uh, RavenCon, the setup date for the very first year was 420. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. That explains a lot, actually. <laughs> it does that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm sure that once we open up to the audience, we're going to hear a whole bunch of questions about your fiction. So let's talk about something else. Uh, you guys have some fascinating hobbies. Mm. Um, let's talk about birds. <coughs> birds. <laughs> how, did, how did you get into, uh, in, into rescuing? Um, actually it was through him, because he, he'd done a certain amount of it, and uh, I had a degree in ethology, and uh, there weren't a lot of raptors, there were a lot of people who handle songbirds and ducks and geese, but not a lot of raptor rehabbers, because of the injury rate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're furious, pointy creatures, yes. Yeah. So, uh... uh <coughs> Seemed like we could do that, and we did. Yep, yep, sure enough. I had the thing where from uh, from a preteen, I just had this knack with birds of prey, and there's nothing supernatural about it. But uh, I, people at nature centers and zoos noticed that raptors tended to just chill out around me, so I wound up taking in raptors and fixing them up and releasing them in the wild and <laughs> them and that uh, great blue herons and stuff like that that yeah, we did, killed people. We did uh, the one thing that uh, most of the rehabbers wouldn't touch, which was the, the fishing birds, the yeah. herons, uh, for two reasons. They're stanky. One, yeah. Oh my god, you have not smelled Ooh. poop until you smell fish poop. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, fish bird poop. Oh my goodness. Oh god. Yeah. Tom goes right out of bald eagles too, you know. Because they eat they fish. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Big wow. massive. Yep. <laughs> right there. We're right in fish poop before ten minutes of that. Nine minute mark, yeah. Yeah. The other thing is that uh, a heron is basically an atlatl. Yeah. You know what an atlatl is, right? It's a force multiplier for a spear. Uh, mm -hmm. That big neck of theirs is powered by extremely dense muscle, and they basically have a giant spear tip on the front of their face, and mm -hmm. they have killed rehabbers by just going in and out the skull, stabbing at them. And we actually had a polycarbonate shield rated for 22 wow. rounds at point blank, and it put a chip in one. Oh, wow. in their eyes there. Yeah. So but normally a heron stuff. doesn't do this with people because they are shy around people, but you get them cornered, mm -hmm. and you don't get a grip behind the back of the head in a hurry. They'll light you up. They're injured, yeah. Yeah, yeah because we're, we know we're trying to help, but to them, we're 200-pound predators. Yeah. So, you know. But uh, Well, how do the mechanics of something like this work? Do you just drive around looking for sick birds? Or oh, no, we should have an ad in the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> we generate our own business by getting them as whenever possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, uh, the thing is, if you find a, a, a sick or an injured bird, especially a bird of prey, uh, most people call the sheriff's department, um, and the sheriff's department has a list of local rehabbers. If they don't call the sheriff's department, they call the zoo, and the zoo will have a list of local rehabbers. Of course, it's also, it's also hilarious since all the Harry Potter movies, Hey, I found an owl! Oh, my neck! Yeah. <laughs> um, and if they don't call the zoo or the sheriff's department, they generally call uh, a vet. And the vets all have lists of local rehabbers. Mm -hmm. They don't want the dang thing. <laughs> um, 
a few vets do take well, take in wild birds, but then they, after they've checked them over, they send they parcel them out to local rehabbers. Yeah, yeah. Never um, trust them when they invite you for chicken nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the very few people will call the people you're supposed to call in the first place, which yeah. is Fish and Wildlife. Okay. And they have a list of locations. Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't want them either. So. So, I try to wind up with them, put them back out in the wild. And uh, what's, what, what's a typical rehab process like? You know, what, what, what do you know about what you do? Well, unfortunately, one of the reasons why we don't do it anymore, uh, the local re the re rehab process very often yeah. begins by by clambering through five acres of wait a minute yeah. bushes. Well, the first step <laughs> in any rehab process is getting the bird to admit it has a problem. <laughs> 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 Because people mostly call you when they found a bird. Farmers call you a lot when mm. they found a bird out in their tangled up in their barbed wire or something. And usually involves the process of going through five acres of wait a minute bushes. <laughs> you know what a wait a minute yeah. bush is. Wait a minute. Hang on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute.